Hello, my name is Zach Shaw. For this sprint, I worked on task BH-81. Uh, it is a level design task. So as the player, I want the first level to introduce the movement mechanic so I know how to traverse the level and the levels after. Uh, level design. The level begins with the player facing a floating text tutorial explaining the basic movement. The player will then navigate a simple maze to practice this movement. Uh, move forward with W, left with A, right with D, and backwards with S. The player will then come to a small gap uh, with a floating text tutorial that reads press space to jump over the gap. Once crossing the gap, the player will then practice jumping over a box. Uh, the next mechanic of the level to be introduced will be the dash mechanic. A holographic text will tell the player to use shift the dash. If the player fails to cross this gap, there will be stairs to go back to the start from the bottom of the pit. This is the only safe pit. Uh, once the player crosses the first gap using the dash, the player will encounter three more gaps, the first two progressively becoming larger, teaching the player how to time the dash. Uh, the last gap will introduce the double dash, teaching the player they can use the dash twice before a cooldown. The player will then enter a large corridor filled with enemies. At the entrance of the corridor, another holographic text will tell the player to try using the dash in a fight. Uh, once the player defeats all the enemies within the corridor, the player will continue down a hall. Uh, this hall will have more platforming to introduce the wall run. Uh, the last section of the tutorial area will introduce the wall run mechanic. A floating text will say, look at the wall and jump towards it to wall run. There will be three walls to practice wall running on. The last corridor will be filled with enemies, but this time there will be platforming options available for the movement mechanics to help the player's movement in the fight. Uh, the player will then fight their way through a massive room filled with enemies to reach the end level, a portal that leads, to, or leads the player to the next level. Uh, the win-loss conditions, the win condition for the level will be reaching the portal at the end. Uh, the losing condition happens when the player falls to their death, bringing their health to zero, or when their health reaches zero while fighting the enemies within the level. Uh, how does the level tutorialize the movement? The movement controls are introduced one by one, with basic movement being first, the jump second, the dash third, and the wall run last. As the level progresses, the level guides the player into practicing and using these mechanics. Uh, the design philosophies as the player... Oh, uh, the player should be constantly moving, either jumping, dashing, wall running, or uh, platforming to fight the enemies. Uh, there will be sections where the player can breathe and look around at the level. Uh, the level itself is based... Sorry about that. Go ahead. Uh, the level itself is based in a destroyed castle in space. Uh, halls with pillars and arches. The first corridor will be grand and open. This area will resemble the remains of a ballroom. The second corridor will be open with the second floor of the collapsing balconies above the first floor. The player can platform on when the portal opens. Uh, the player can view the next level starting area through the portal. Uh, the enemies in the level, we have the rocket enemy and the melee enemy. Uh, the rocket enemy uses a rocket launcher. The melee enemy runs up and attacks the player with their fist. Completion criteria. A small basic maze to pra practice basic movement. A small gap and box ledge to practice jumping. A gap to introduce the dash mechanic. Two more gaps that get larger, teaching the player to time the dash. Uh, one extremely large gap to introduce the double dash. One large corridor where the player fights lots of enemies on the same level using the dash to dodge and fight. A section dedicated to teaching the player how to wall run. A section of platforming leading to the end practice to the end to practice what the player has learned, a large corridor with, these, with a second floor filled with enemies combining platforming and combat, and a portal to the next level. So opening up a, our build here. So right here. And we're going to go ahead and press start game. Uh, press W to move forward, S for backwards, just like so. And then as we move up the ramp here, we have our small maze. Uh, use D to strafe right. Use A to strafe left. And then once more for practice. Jump over the gap. Uh, the box turned into a fallen column. I thought it fit the theme a little bit better. And then we're going to press shift to dash across the gap. Pressing shift gets us across. Like I said before, if you fall, there's stairs to get back up and try again. Here we're going to try the dash again, so we're just going to press shift. Jump with space, then dash. So jump, dash. Wait two seconds. And we can double dash here. 
Now we're going to use it in a fight. We're going to go ahead and dash over here. I'm going to just quickly run through this. There we go. And we're going to go over here and grab some pickups real quick. Some shields, and we're going to move on. Here's the wall running. Uh, wall run by jumping next to the wall. And then we're going to jump across here. Make it across. This is the platforming section I was talking about. We have plenty of enemies to fight as we're platforming. Oh, and I died. Now we're going to hit the checkpoint again. We're going to do it over again. Wall run. I am missing all my shots. I'm going to dash to get across this. There we go. And this is all of our enemies in here. Grab some shields. And then here is the end portal. We can see through it. And once we go through, we spawn in the next level. And that is my test. Hello, my name is Raymond Johnson, and today I will be demonstrating uh, our current build for uh, this week's sprint. The final build, I should say, for this week's sprint. I'll go ahead and open that up now. Now, uh, I do want to preface this by saying, you might have to bear with me for a second, because while I was working on my level, um... I was moving the player start around to ensure, just to quickly and easily ensure that uh, my doors that I set up were working properly, and I forgot to move it back to the very beginning of the level. So we will be working through things here in a somewhat uh, not streamlined way. But I'll go ahead and open up the... Uh, Task and Jira for my level, so I can go over the doors. Okay. Alright, so this is under, uh, again, the task for my level. Uh, as the player, I want the second level to introduce the rocket jump mechanic so I know how to use the mechanic and to traverse the level and reach unreachable spaces. In terms of the doors, how they're supposed to work is, and I will showcase that in a little bit here, um, how they're supposed to work is you're supposed to fight your way up to a button in either of the adjacent rooms uh, that will open up a door connecting to uh, the other room. You can start from either room, it doesn't matter which one. Uh, but what is important is to reach the final area. Both buttons in both rooms must be pressed. I have not been able to uh, set up the system to where, you know, when you press both buttons, the final door opens quite yet, but we are getting there. I will go ahead and demonstrate how that's going, um, how I've got these doors to work at least. I'll start with this one. And also these inner buttons are just to open up the connecting door for when you open up the initial door for either room. That sounds a little confusing, but once we uh, get back to the beginning and I work my way from there, it'll make a bit more sense. Alright, so let's quickly, quickly backtrack our way so I can showcase the tutorial area as well as my mechanic for this level. Yes, yes, very angry at me. Okay. Let's go ahead and pick up some ammo here. Just enough for me to get back.
Oh boy. It's a very unorthodox way of getting back, but just to show where we start from, here we are. This is the starting area, and it's part of the initial tutorial for uh, the rocket jump mechanic. I have not set up the text-based guides yet to sort of guide the player in the right direction as to how this mechanic is supposed to be used. But I will at least showcase how this tutorial area is meant to be run through. Now, um, I said on Orthodox earlier about the way I was getting back because I also would like to have it set up to where there is an environmental hazard on the outside of these gated areas. So if you miss time a jump, miss a jump, anything like that, then you will be reset back to a checkpoint or uh, once you hit the limits for those checkpoints, you have to start over and so on. I'll go ahead and run through this area now. Ooh, yep, yeah, see, I missed that one. But basically, the, the jumps get progressively bigger as you traverse through this initial area until you reach here, where you're supposed to scale up this tower in order to reach the plant itself. Now let me just collect these here. Whoop, a little laggy. Well, that works for our purposes at the moment. After you clear that uh, tutorial area and you get accustomed to the rocket jump mechanic, that's when you truly get into the level. I'll pick up this ammo here. And then proceed to show you how the main buttons are supposed to work. some armor there and we'll go ahead and do chemical storage because that's the door that has not been opened yet and as I said in order to reach that button at the very top there the players gonna have to fight their way through Fight your way up through the stairs. Oh. Looks like I got attached to the wall there somehow with our wall run mechanic. That's alright. I'll just have to make my way back through. Oh my. Okay. This lag is really getting me. OBS is not treating me well right now. <laughs> I 
As you can see as well, I've also still been having a bit of trouble with uh, getting my lighting all sorted out, and I think that has to do with my built data for whatever reason. I will be addressing that for sure in the next sprint. All right, so we've made our way all the way up. And this button will open up the door that was blocked initially, as we can see here in this animation. Make our way back down quickly here. Whoop, wrong door. We can head right on through. And in an ideal situation, I would press this button and then make my way through uh, the, this other area, the chemical processing area, make it up to that button, which will then, once both these buttons are pressed, will open this door. However, again, that is not functioning at the moment, so I cannot demonstrate it, unfortunately. But that is where I am at in our... Um, finishing up this current sprint. I'm hoping to make a lot of quick progress in our final sprint and really get everything all put together. And now I will hand it off to Michael to demonstrate his level Skyway Byway. Thank you for watching. Hello, I'm Michael Gisto and I'm with Team 8-Bit Hamsters. Right. As the melee character, I need to be more reactive to the player so I can be an obstacle in combat. The melee character needs to be able to track or pursue the player more intensely. This means the attention span and reduced speed of the character must be improved to engage in combat. Point 1. Melee character stays engaged with the player if there is a line of sight to the player. Alright. Open the game. Level 1 has the most melee character in it. Again, um... Melee character stays engaged with the player if there is a line of sight to the player. Melee are the blue ones. They stay engaged with the player if they detect the player. And they stay engaged if there is a line of sight. May the character is only slightly slower than the player to keep up in combat. <gasps> May the characters, after spotting, have almost the speed of the main character. Character will only strike when the player is in melee distance. As you can hear that from the huas, 
Melee characters are only striking when they get close enough to hit. Getting rid of some of the uh, ranged characters so it's easier to focus on the melee characters. See, uh, they're making two rows. The ones in back can't strike because they're too far away. Well, the ones that are closest to the character can actually hit. And since they're blocking one another, sometimes they obstruct the sight and they wander off. As a level, I need to have an onboarding for the player so that they may learn new techniques of the level ahead. This is an increase in the tutorial section for the Skyway Bioway so that we start out easy and move to more complicated uses of the Skybox mechanics. It introduces the blocks in a direct way. The user must path across blocks at the start. Okay. Let's go to the level select. So use them as path across blocks at the start. Small reward for the player using blocks. Paths a second time to encourage the use of blocks if they are still wary. So the second usage are at the end of these roads. Road 1 leads to a block path that goes to health. Road two is a block path that leads to extra ammo. <laughs> block paths have a, a easy difficulty at the start of the level. So the easy difficulty is that the block paths are simply at floor height and you can walk straight onto them. They provide no real challenge and they're there to get the player used to them. Block paths have a medium difficulty at the middle of the level. So to, toward the middle of the level, you have to wall run against these blocks in order to make it in. And using the techniques of the previous level, the wall run also has jumps that you have to make. Block paths have a hard difficulty near the end of the level. Clear out a few guys before I go in.
All right. And again, block paths have a hard difficulty near the end of the level. So there's two block paths here. One is here and one is up there. First, it starts off with a wall run. And you have to jump. The switching of the wall run is actually quite confusing if you're going at high speed. Past these guys. <laughs> it's more difficult because you have to slow down slightly. If you go too fast, you just run straight off the edge. Hello, my name is Zachary Mealy, and today I'm going to be going over the tasks that we had completed for Sprint 1 review. And here in Jira, we have the tasks that I have completed, which the two ones that I fixed were bugs that have been persistent throughout uh, the development in this class for our game range janitor. So if we open this one right here. This bug pertains to the main menu being visible the HUD being visible in the main menu. Now, this was a problem for us because obviously we did not want the HUD in the main menu. This should only be active inside of a level for player information. So what we had to do was get rid of the HUD in the player menu, which we had completed, and I'll be showing you over in the build in just a moment. Other task I had completed was fixing the bug that involved the master volume slider not controlling the in-game values. Essentially what happened with this bug was when you were on the option screen and you messed around with the volume slider, no in-game volumes actually changed. So the slider essentially had no functionality. So we had to go in there and fix that up to make it alter the volumes of the games to your pleasing. And the last thing I'm going to be showing today is a task that is still in progress but I want to show because it was basically done in two parts and I did get one of the parts completed so what we wanted to create was a control screen for the player to reference if they ever forgot what controls do what in game so as the player I wanted to click the H button in level to open a quick menu so that I could see what each button does However, in the description of this task, I want to take it a little bit further past just a hot menu while playing uh, in the level, and I wanted it to be an independent screen that the player can navigate to to just read as well. So you can see at the bottom of the description here, we have a quick screen to remind the player of what each key does is a quick way for the player to refresh their memory in game. The screen can be accessed from the options menu as well as pulled up mid-level by clicking the H. So I did go ahead and create a completely different menu for this control. So I'm gonna show you that inside of the build as well. So if we go over here into Perforce, and you have our team here, 8-Bit Hamster. This is the build here. We're gonna be using the change list number 932002. This was the new build that we added. And we're gonna jump right in. So inside here we have Marine Janitor. This is the main menu. So first thing I'll be showing is that the HUD is no longer visible on the game menu. You can see that the player icon is no longer at the bottom left, and we do not have the ammo count in the bottom right anymore. It is just its own independent menu showing the player what they need to be seen in this instance. That was that bug fixed. Now, the second bug we had fixed was the options menu using the master volume slider. 
So I have went ahead and separated master volume into two. One for overall volume in the game, which I'm just going to lower that a little bit. As you can see, the master volume now works, and it makes the background music lower, or anything in the game that we have developed with the tag master for its sound class is controlled by this slider right here. So if we make it now louder, you can hear that the background music is much more louder. And for the purpose of this demonstration, we disabled the 1280 by 720 button for the purpose of the sound effect. So this is what it sounds like normally. And then if we use the sound effect slider, well, you could hear it's much louder. And if we do lower, you barely hear it at all. And now the last thing I wanted to show was the creation of the control menu. However, it wasn't completed because we also want to make this quick accessible from the level. I was able to go ahead and complete half this task and create its own independent menu screen for the player to look into if they ever so chose. Hello, my name is Christopher Williams. Uh, I am with Team 8-Bit Hamsters on our game Marine Janitor. The uh, two tasks that I completed this sprint were uh, BH92. As a player, I want a portal that would display an image of the next level that I am going to transition to. I'm going to start with this one so that I can run through the levels showing the completion criteria for the portals and then I will follow up on my level which is the last one for uh, BH104. As a player I want a level that fits the overall themes and moods of the entire game. I also want a level where all mechanics can be used and implemented. Once I get to that uh, final level, the speedrun gauntlet, I will show the completion criteria where each mechanic has uh, an area that it can be used and implemented throughout the game for the player to like quote unquote master in that area so we are going to open uh, let me pull this up sorry about that pull up per force there we go so we're going to go with uh, marine janitor build uh, 932002 it's our most recent one I'm going to change the screen capture so it's not so laggy here we go and so I will start the game for the first completion criteria on the portals I'm kind of just gonna sprint all the way to the end to the portal so that we can see it um, so the portals will have a portal to the next level there will be an image of the next level displayed within the portal and the portal will move the player from its current level to the next one so let's close that. Let's run through the level real quick. I am going to turn down the game volume real quick. There we go. Okay. There we go. That's better. So I'm just going to rush through this level real quick to get to the portal to show it. And then I will go to my level to show the second task completion. So we're just going to run through here real quick. We're going to skip all these enemies and just run on through to the next area. Ooh, almost fell there. There we go. Get a little wall running in that I made. So we can get a dash in here and get that health, pick up the armor. Here is the portal. The next level being displayed in here is chem plant. Oop, I kind of went through that a little fast. We are actually going to skip this level. Get one that's a little bit brighter so I can display the, um, the portal more. So we'll just rush through this. Screen. So the portal is displayed up there. The um, the way that the portal works is I made a Niagara system and uh, took still images from each level showing 
uh, which level it will go to, and then I use portal IDs to, and then I use portal IDs to hone the portals into the correct areas that I wanted them. So we're just gonna skip over this guy real quick. And then we'll take this up and I will display the portal. I wanted to use this uh, level to do it because it's the brightest and I'm not going to be constantly attacked by enemies the whole time when I'm trying to show it. So here you can see the speed, uh, speed gauntlet level. Um, this is clearly not the same level as the one we are currently in. I will pull up uh, the completion criteria for it. So that shows uh, that it's a portal to the next level. We saw that within the first level. There's an image of the next level displayed within the portal. We can see that. And now it's going to move uh, from this level Skyway Byway to my level Speedrun Gauntlet. And here I will go over the next task that I completed this week, or this sprint which is, uh, as a player, I want the level that fits the overall themes and moods of the entire game. I also want a level where all mechanics can be used and implemented. So uh, I wanted to create areas for wall running implementation, areas for players to use the rocket boost, areas for dashing, and areas for uh, gravity block usage, so that each mechanic that uh, our designers made will be have areas that are implemented in this level. And this is going to be like the level where players should have mastered those mechanics by now and should be used to using them. So I will go through that real quick. We have areas for wall running uh, right here. Next up is the gravity blocks and dashing. Oh, my so we have the gravity block usage here with the checkpoint just in case the players fall down into the lava. Um, you can dash or you can just jump over. Oh, see, this is exactly why there's a checkpoint. Perfect. Um, so you can either jump on the moving platform or you can just dash across. You can grapple up to the wall. Ooh, sorry, lagging a bit. See, we'll just dash across. We'll grapple up, jump through this guy down here uh, for the overall themes and moods that I wanted to try and implement in this level was like a um, kind of like a medieval castle that demons have taken over and have used technology to kind of upgrade it a bit so we have like the fiery hills in the background we've got some dungeons uh, dungeon cells with melee enemies locked in there and then we have these enemies here go through and grab the sambo Where's he at? There he is. So we'll kill these guys. Uh, so the rocket boost is also our rocket launcher. So it, it does damage enemies in like an AOE form, but players can also just look down and launch themselves up. So that um, is an area you can get up there if you wanted to fight that um, demon closer up. There's an area for dashing right here. Take care of this guy. We can either jump across and climb, you can wall run, you can grapple hook, or you can use the rocket boost to jump up there. The rocket boost does consume your rocket ammo though, so that's something players will have to think about. And now we're up in this next area. Then we can use our grappling hook. You can just run and wall jump. You can dash and wall, wall run. I like to grapple and wall run. I think it looks a little bit cleaner of these enemies and then we will drop down this well into a crypt where we have two remaining enemies and for the next sprint so right here is going to be the win condition um, for the next sprint this portal will be taking us to a boss layer where players will fight uh, the final boss that will finish the game but for now I just have it as a win condition Thank you so much for watching.